Well, hey guys, it's uh, second to last day of muzzleloading deer season here in southern Michigan, and um, I thought I was going to be working all weekend, but I couldn't pick up any hours, so I got off work and I boogied out here as quick as I could, and uh, I hunted this spot. There's my muzzleloader sitting right there, but I hunted this spot. Uh, a few days ago because I found out the deer were coming uh, through this swamp right along the edge of that river and it's making like a funnel and they're coming right out into this little field here at night <clears throat> because it's late season and there's really not a whole lot of food for them to eat so there must be something out in this field that they're munching on they might just be eating that dry grass just to put something in their stomach because I found their droppings and there's a lot of fibers in there so they're e either eating bark, twigs, or just some kind of plant fibers just to try and keep something in their stomach but I think the deer are still a little bit spooked and they're not, not coming out here till after dark so today I'm gonna go right down in the swamp and set up right near their main run and I should have the wind to my advantage so I don't know if you can see off in the distance there but right past the shadow of the sun is the river which pretty much runs east and west and I'm gonna go right down at the edge of that river right in the swamp and sit right about there right on the edge of the river there's a little like a little 10 foot rise with some bushes and I'm gonna use that to be a natural blind and that deer run comes all the way through this swamp and there's a bunch of channels that meet up at the edge of the river because that's the funnel point and they all merge together and they run right along the edge of the swamp all the way down and the river just keeps on going but they come out right here because it's a another little high spot and this is where they come up out and I can show you what it looks like on the ground. We got the river, which runs east and west. This is north. And the prevailing wind comes from the west. So if I, and uh, this little field is like right here. So if I come and I set up like right there, I'll have the wind in my favor because the deer are moving in this direction in the evening and they're moving in this direction in the morning. I already figured that out prior. So I'll have the wind in my favor. I'll be able to look all the way down their run across the edge of that river. And it's in the swamp so it's fairly open. There's just a few tamarack trees here and there and hopefully I'll get one coming right up to me because they're gonna come up and they're probably gonna come out a little early because they're gonna feel safe in that swamp and then once it gets dark once shooting hours is over that's when they'll actually come out into this field from all these different there's like four different trails coming in but if I set up in here I should be able to catch them just to give you like a bird's eye view. Alright, so I'm down in here. Right here is that little rise I was talking about using as a natural blind. It's about 20 feet long and maybe 10 feet wide. And it's only up about a foot out of the swamp. But it'll be a dry spot for me to sit and it'll give me some, some cover to hide from the deer. And uh, another part of the reason for me coming down in the swamp like this is I was just kind of getting tired of hunting the fields and the woods and the thickets. And I just wanted to change the scenery. And it's really beautiful down here in the swamp with the tamaracks and all the cattails around. Got the river right there. Oh, it's a really beautiful place. Nice and peaceful get to hear the snow geese off in the background 
thumping their wings on the water. Nice sunny spot. And hope a deer comes out before shooting hours ends. So here I am, I'm all set up. I'm right in the middle of this, what looks to be a little alder thicket. I see an old dead nannyberry bush right there too. It's kind of a unique habitat. And you really don't find this a lot around here anymore because the uh, the swamp maples that aren't native, they've kind of taken over a lot of these areas. But, uh, you know, this is the true Michigan, southern Michigan habitat right here. Because you got the swamp and the river, you got the tamaracks, you got the little alder stands. Usually you can tell these alders because they're a deciduous tree, but they look like they get little bitty pine cones on them. But I was going to show you guys, but none of these have them on them. So. But I'm just going to sit here and wait. I got a nice open view here. So I can get a nice shot right through there. And there's a deer run that runs right straight into this thicket from those cattails and probably from that. You see that little rise right there? Kind of overemphasizing it a bit. But that's a, another slightly higher spot and there's a bunch of tamaracks growing. And I can guarantee you that's where those deer are bedding down. And just beyond that, there's another rise, which is a white cedar stand. And I know those deer are bedding down in that too. And they're waiting right up until dark to come out. Because they've got brows right there. They don't need to come out until it's dark. And right over here, I got one more little bitty opening right between these. And there's another deer run right there. That runs east-west right in front of that lone tamarack I got a nice open shot so I can hear and see the deer coming and as soon as they get in that opening I can you know hopefully let them have it well, this late in the season you know I've kind of I'm not so serious about deer hunting now I got that pig on opening day of gun season so I've got meat and uh, you know, I've been busy working. Really, the main reason for me coming out today isn't so much to to get a deer. It'd be nice if I get one, but it's mainly just to get out here and relax. I got the wind in my face, which, you know, isn't good for comfort because it's a cold wind. It's cold. But I got that sun shining on me. And knowing I got that wind in my face, that's good for deer hunting. Because that way you know you got the wind in your favor. If the wind's blowing against your back, then, you know, any deer out in front of you is going to uh, pick up your scent. And I need just a little bit of luck. And uh, hopefully those deer will come out. I have a feeling they're not going to, though, because uh, we're coming up on a full moon. It's a clear night, and it's sunny, so those deer really don't have any reason to get up and move until after dark. And, uh... They're probably sitting in the sun right now just enjoying that sun until it goes down. Then they'll get cold and they'll want to start moving to get their blood circulating. Give you a little bit of my perspective. You know, deer comes out right there. Wait for the smoke to clear and hopefully I'll see a deer running off. Or hopefully I'll see a deer laying there even better well here it is guys it's the next day I stayed out here till after you know dark and uh, didn't see anything didn't hear anything so I headed on out of here and sure enough I forgot my little orange hunting seat right back there in the thicket so I figured I'd come out today this is the last day of muzzleloader season and uh, I'm just going to walk right through the swamp. And uh, then I'll make my way back and hopefully this time I'll remember to pick up my little hunting seat there. Rabbit tracks. It's kind of hard to be quiet. 
the snow has that frozen rain under it. So every time I step, it makes a big crunch. But this is a nice thick spot. If I can get back over there to that little Tamarack Island or beyond it to where those cedars are, I might actually jump something up. Beautiful day. Lots of red willow down in here, red osier dogwood. Great for basket weaving. Great for medicine. Good for making fish traps. Cattails. Dig down in there and get those roots. Give you a good source of starches and sugars this time of year when there's not a lot else available. The swamp was pretty dry, but we got that rain all day and it turned it into a sponge again. The deer don't have any problem getting through this, but me, it's a different story. But you should be able to see this is a really heavily used deer run going right through this swamp and all this thick stuff. If I step on these little mounds of roots and grass, it'll keep me up out of the mud. It's almost frozen. Once this freezes over, I could walk right through it, but down in there where those deer have been traveling, it's a good foot deep of mud, so I don't want to go in that because it'll be up over my boots. I just heard a very faint grunt coming from right in that thick stuff where this trail runs into. Uh, that deer probably heard me and he's grunting to see if it's another deer maybe, I don't know. I don't know deer language. But I guarantee you, he knows I'm here. There's no way I can get back in there without making too much noise and it's too thick to see for a shot. Only thing I can hope for is one jumps out into one of these little openings. I notice when I'm hunting like this, man, those deer can be, you know, five, ten yards away and they'll just sit there because they feel relatively safe as long as they're hidden but if you get just one step closer they'll come bursting out man if I've had times where they've almost given me a heart attack they jump up so close that buck could be bedded down right there and I wouldn't even see him man that drives me crazy That red willow's been nibbled on. The whole top has got fresh nibble marks. Those deer are nibbling that red willow, eating the tips. Well, I'm in that stand of tamaracks now, but it's actually a lot thicker. All these little shrubs are dogwood, and it's uh, really hard to get through. But what I'll do in a situation like this is, is I'll just stop and I'll listen. Because there's not much wind today. So if I hear any ice breaking or any twigs snapping, if I hear something brushing against the brush moving along, I can be certain that it's most likely a deer. And if it's moving towards me, I'll just sit here and wait. And if it's not moving towards me, well, I'm out of luck because there's no way I'm going to be able to move up on it through this thick stuff. It's going to hear me. But 
you know, just like that other stocking video I did. I'll just stand here for like five, ten minutes, and I'll carefully move, you know, five, ten yards down the deer run, and stand there and just hope that one doesn't hear me and hope that one uh, makes itself visible. That's all you can really do if you're if you're stalking deer, you know, is try to be quiet and hope that one pokes its head out or chest or something so you can get a good shot of hunt. But it can be hard to get a good shot through all this thick brush. So you gotta be, uh, well, I try to be ethical about it. You know, I don't just take shots into thick brush. I make sure it's a deer for one. <laughs> and then also I make sure I have a good clean shot which is hard to do because I pass up a lot of deer doing that but I'd rather pass a deer and let it go than than risk uh, wounding it and having it run off for miles through the swamp where I'll never be able to find it I need to get a good solid shot with a good blood trail so that I know I can track that deer and I know that deer will only go maybe a hundred yards max And for that, I either need to shoot them in the shoulders, I need to shoot them in the neck, the head, or the chest and get hopefully a double lung shot or a heart shot. But usually if you shoot them in the neck, they're going to drop right there, or the head. And at this close range, I mean, if I see a deer, it's only going to be maybe 10, 20 yards away maximum. So taking a head shot is going to be real easy. I'm going to go ahead and be quiet now and uh, just chill out for a few and kind of make my way through here. Well, that's it, guys. didn't have a whole lot of opportunities to do any serious deer hunting this year, but I did get out opening day and I got that pig, so that's good. Went down in the swamp there. Today I mainly just come back to get my little uh, orange hunting seat that I left out here last night. And couldn't help but take a walk through that swamp since I was already down in there. But. Uh, I don't know, I guess that's the way it goes when you're hunting, you know. You don't always get something. Anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for all the comments and support. Hope you guys have better luck than me. He's still alive.